So, now we see the package. Our package is fully explained in this paper, which is on uh, just a uh, very scientific model of the development. Uh, it's also in the material, uh, it's also enclosed in the material that you have on the page. And, uh, yeah. Uh, we arrived here after several iterations of the software, and now we are also doing some other iterations. Uh, we have actually four modules, four components in our SIG estimator. This is the way we represent components. I don't know if I showed you before the, this one way. Uh, uh, we have SIG AV, uh, which is the, uh, the the, the one that fits the experimental value line. It takes in input uh, the position of the stations and the, and the data and, and, the, and the data which are measured. And give uh, in output the distances and the experimental value. Then we have 6db, we say theoretical variogram is the one that takes the output from the experimental variogram and fit a, 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 theoretical, a theoretical variable. And then finally, we have CK with just the solver of the linear equation. Actually, there are a, li a little more variation on it. So uh, when you do connect in the SIM file, you are doing this kind of operation here, which is graphically represented. You join the output of uh, one component to the input of the other one. And this is, a, for instance, uh, an example of uh, how, uh, how our phishing software work. And uh, we have uh, the connection of the EAB to the TV component. Actually, here, uh, you, you not only have the CK component, but we have a uh, other two components. One is the particle score, which is a new entry. Actually, is a um, calibrator, and, uh, and the other is a cyclo, is a leave one out. <coughs> and we use uh, uh, the leave one out procedure is uh, a procedure to estimate the error for any stochastic process. You know, we uh, we. Uh, Assume that we have each one of one process a time series of measurement, for instance, of temperature. So what we do, we do the cringing from the to all of us minus one, and then we forecast the measure where he is, and then we make the difference, and so and we repeat all the operation for all of us. So the procedure is quite stupid from the theoretical point, from the conceptual point of view, but it's very cumbersome to do if you don't have a, a, a procedure that does it. And we have it in this this cyclo. Simply does this, take the endpoint, take away one, do the cleaning for with the, the N minus one, and then estimate the error with the last one, and repeat the operation for all the combinations. Uh, the particle swarm here is used actually by the uh, for fitting theoretical semi diagram. Uh, we can uh, we we could have used other methods because you have the theoretical semi diagram as a function. You uh, and we have the data. We could have used this squared. At that time, we have a, a stochastic uh, system of. Uh, uh, for the estimation of parameter, and instead of using maybe from conceptually more simple this uh, square estimator, we use the, those, those ones. We have uh, the particle swarm is a, a calibrator where we have a, you try several solutions, and then there is an algorithm for convergence of this one. Maybe uh, Giuseppe will, will explain <coughs> some of it. I, I don't think today, but maybe in the next day. So uh, we have to. Uh, what does the particle swarm? The particle swarm 
is used for actually given the form of the theoretical uh, semi-variogram is estimate the seal, the nugget, the range, the extension of the parameter of the parameter that appear in in our theoretical semi-variogram. Yeah, the things that, uh, you know, <coughs> the experimental, uh, the, the, the thing can go very, not very easy. The uh, initial estimation can be very far from, far, far, far away. And so that's, uh, that's, that is uh, some work to do. What does the, our, a package contains contains 11 choices of theoretical semi-variograms, actually four types of bridgings. Uh, the simple bridging and the trended bridging and the, the local, the trended, the local simple bridging. That I am going to explain in a while what they are. Um, and uh, each of these, uh, so you have uh, 11 solution by four type of region, which is 44 solutions for interpolating the thing. <coughs> and we have two, yeah, two, uh, two modes, which is one where you can produce the uh, raster, meaning you, in any point you can produce the, the data set, the other end you, you can produce just in a set of points which is mostly what we will do during this, this school because uh, doing the raster is, is uh, computationally expensive. And uh, in that case, we produce a shape file. All the product uh, of, we, we, do, we do in this case always produce things that you can uh, represent on a GIS, which can be quite cumbersome or boring. <laughs> like the last hours of your work show, but uh, you know, at least you have a direction where to go to. Uh, the, the ordinary bridging, for simple bridging, is the one that I, I explained to you, actually to you. Uh, the, the trend of bridging is uh, 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 assume that uh, the process is stochastic, but also have a trend which is assume linear or locally linear here. And so you first fit the plane and then subtract the data from the, the data of the plane and do the bridging, the simple bridging on, on the z -wars. That's all. Local and local, uh, when we uh, assume that we have a hundred of points of measurements. But uh, you maybe know that uh, just uh, uh, the value of, of, of each point is determined by the surrounding point, and less, less uh, depending on the uh, point that are uh, far away. So uh, for computational purposes, it's uh, a good thing to avoid to use all the points, uh, use just the the set of closed points, and so the local, the local bridgings here just select a, a set of a number of points in, around the, the desired position, and but for the rest are similar to the to the other one. In the ordinary bridging, all the measure measures are used. In the decay, just a portion. In the, in the circle, for instance, obviously you can vary the extension of the circle. And uh, this is the composition of the whole thing in action, actually, in uh, operational uh, things where you have the, the, the creasing, estimating the data, the, the values coming in. It can uh, work also in continuous time, if you want. There are data coming in. You have the bridging that is executing each time the estimation of the, 
the estimation of the experimental variogram and the fitting of the theoretical variogram. So in principle, you can fit it to any instant of time different type of, uh, of uh, rigging, which is not usually the, the thing you do. Uh, actually, you will not do like this. You, are, you will average, but in principle, it's possible to do this work. And you calibrate each time the variogram here. And then, for instance, this is used in another process. For instance, in the process, in this case, you see, you see two components here that you don't know <coughs> what they mean, but one is long wave radiation budget, and the other is short wave radiation budget. A thing that you have to match soon, which is the estimation of radiation, for instance, for estimating the, the for estimating the uh, above transpiration. And uh, in fact, in the end, the, the, the hand is uh, the estimation of the evapotranspiration, which was used to be called Szymanski Hoare evapotranspiration, but now we uh, call it in a different way, which is called uh, geoframe T. And T is not for extraterrestrial, but evapotranspiration. So this is, uh, for instance, like a, a working co uh, configuration of the components for uh, where you use the <coughs> bridging and uh, produce the <coughs> final result. This is maybe another one. In this way, uh, uh, long wave, short wave radiation are uh, combined to produce net radiation. Then uh, it's calculated the potential about the transpiration, a concept on which I will uh, go back on Monday. And uh, then we use here other components. One is the snow component. The other is rain-snow separation, which means that we have the, the rainfall. We have to separate the rainfall in snowfall and rainfall. And this is done by this one. Then the snow is treated by the snow component, and then we have uh, a subsystem which is called embedded reservoir, which is the one that you will use to, to predict the runoff. And all this stuff <coughs> work together. Just a matter that you build the SIM file for this, which can, can grow quite complicated, actually. The overall scope, uh, at, the, at the end, the scope will be that uh, you, you are used to write your, uh, your uh, your files, but in principle, you can do a graphic interface that where you connect the components and they connect if the output and input are compatible, and then they produce automatically the same file. So far, we didn't do it. It, it exists in uh, OMS 2, uh, it, it doesn't exist anymore in OMS 3. So, we are done also for this one.